Hello, my name is Peter Raymer. Today we're going to be talking about how we can send data into a Microsoft Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operation form. Uh, in the previous video, we talked about how you can send in data via the parameters property on a menu item. Um, in this video, we're going to talk about how you can use the enum parameters and enum type parameters to pass data into a form. Um, using a menu item. There's multiple ways we can pass data into a form. In this case, we're talking about menu item, menu item properties. The value of passing data into a form is we can control how that form works and we can have multiple menu items, each passing in different parameters that maybe control um, how the form works a little differently. In this case, we might have a form that we want it to be only in read-only mode and restricted access to users, and then another menu item that gives them full control. Okay, let's take a look. So in this case, I've got a menu item as before called RSM Vehicle Service Workbench. It has a object type, a form, and an object um, RSM Vehicle Service Workbench. So we're calling a form, but uh, we wanna pass some data to this. So the way we can do that is I can copy this menu item by pushing control C or right clicking and saying copy and then I can duplicate this by pushing control V on my keyboard. There's not a paste um, button here but I think I can right click here and say paste as well. Now that I've got my copy I can uh, rename this and call it enum. <clears throat> I won't be able to set these properties just by uh, selecting it. I need to double click on it and bring it into this designer for me to be able to edit the properties on the menu item. Specifically, we're looking today at the enum type parameter and the enum parameter. These two work in conjunction. This is the enum that we're going to use and then this is the value of that enum that we want to pass in. The nice thing about using an enum is there is an explicit set values for an enum um, and you don't have to wonder of what cases do we need to handle. We can make sure our code on the form side handles every case of the enum um, and then we know we've handled every scenario. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to create a new enum um, that we can pass into the form. The way we would do that after creating our D365 project is we can right click on our project, select add, and then new item. And then we can select base enum. We can give it a name and click add. In this case, I've already created an enum. I created an enum, it's a little bit of a longer name, but it's Tutorial Vehicle Service Workbench Mode. And then um, I right clicked on it and selected New Element, and I added two elements. One is named Full Operation, and one is named Read Only. So the purpose of this enum is I have two uh, values that I wanna pass into the form. Um, if I pass it in full operation, I want this form to be fully operational. If I pass in read only, I want to restrict it and make sure um, that no data can be edited. Um, so similar to our previous example with parameters, but this one uses enums. Okay, so if I go back to our um, new menu item, I can look at this enable type parameter. I need to set this one first um, before I set the enum parameter. So I'll go ahead and type in the name of the new um, menu item that I created. So tutorial vehicle service workbench mode and I'll hit enter. And then when I come back to this enum parameter and I click the drop down arrow, I now only see the various elements for that enum. So that's very helpful. So I'm going to go ahead and select full operation for this one. And I could rename my um, menu item if I wanted to and call this one full operation. Um, I've already got one, so I'll just call this one full operation two. Just, just for fun. 
So again, to recap, we've set the enum type parameter and the enum parameter. This is information we want to send over to a form. Now we want that form to be able to read it and change its look and feel. Okay, so if I open the form, I'm going to double click on it. This is my form. I need to override the init method um, to be able to access this parameter information. The way I would override the init method is to right click on this methods node that's right underneath the main form node. I would then say override and I would scroll down until I see the init method and select it. In my case, I've already overridden the init method, so it's not going to show up in my list here. Instead, it'll show up in my list of methods right here. I'll go ahead and double click the init method and it will open the code editor behind the scenes for my form. If I also want to see the code, <clears throat> I can right click on my form and say view code. And that'll also bring up this same um, window with my code. I've gone ahead and already added some code. Normally, if you were just overriding the init method for the first time, you would see this init method and this call to super. Super is going to do the work of um, initializing the form for the first time and creating all the controls and data sources. So in most cases, we're going to want to put our code after the super. So after all these controls have been created, that way we can reference them in our code. Okay, here's the code. I'm going to go ahead and explain um, what each piece means. This first statement, if element.args, element refers to our current form, and .args is a method that gets out the args object passed to our form. So when we have our menu item and we're setting the enum type parameter and enum parameter, the system is actually going to take these values and populate an object called args that is on our form that's being opened up. So what we're really checking is, is there any arguments um, passed to this form? If there is, we'll run to our next if statement. The next thing we want to check is, is the enum type tutorial vehicle service workbench mode, which if you remember is the new enum that we created. If you have a different enum, you would put that in here. So basically, we could have multiple menu items that use an entirely different enum as well and enum values. So the very first thing we want to do is make sure that um, for this condition, um, the enum on our menu item is what we think it is. So the way we can do that is we can use this global function called enum num, and this will return um, the unique identifier for this um, enum and compare it against the um, enum type parameter that we passed in here and make sure that they match. If they do match, then we'll come into this if statement. The next thing we want to look at is the actual enum value we passed in. So in this case, we passed in full operation. We're going to set whatever is in that enum parameter value to a form va variable named mode. So I went ahead and created a form variable um, of type tutorial vehicle service workbench mode. That's the name of our enum. And I gave it a name mode. And I am storing whatever was in this args parm enum into this variable. This just makes it a little easier to reference going forward. The next thing I did is I created a new method on this um, form that I'm going to call. So I'm going to call element.change form based on mode. The reason why I created this method is perhaps I want um, a, another, I need to call this method from another place in the form. Um, by me putting all this code into a separate method, I can reuse it. We could have put all this code just right inside this if, um, but I thought this could be a good example to show you as well. So the way you create a new method is just the same way you would on any other class. 
um, we just give it a name. It's got a void return type and I've got open close parentheses. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use a switch statement which if you haven't seen a switch statement before, you can um, Google search for this and get some more details, but it works very similar to an if statement. You could have used an if statement, but I thought this was a good example of how to use a switch statement. So based on what comes in as mode, we're gonna take different actions. So basically if this mode variable is set to tutorial vehicle service workbench mode, colon colon full operation. I'm gonna set the data source, allow edit property, allow delete and allow create to all true. I'm gonna set my button group um, on my form to true as well. I've got a button gr uh, group right over here on my form designer. I've called it form button group and I've set the auto declaration to yes. This allows me to reference it directly in code. So if I go back to our code, I'm gonna set all these data source properties and this button to true. The other case is if this mode is read only, then I'm gonna set the data source properties to false, as well as set this button group to false. So basically these buttons will become disabled and no user will be able to click on it when it's in read only mode. So that's basically it. We have shown you um, how to pass in an enum type, which is just the enum, the name of the enum. And then the enum parameter is the specific value you want to pass. In this case, we have full operation, but we could have had another menu item where we pass in the enum parameter. I already created one, so you can see that here. So if, I, if a user clicks on this menu item that's been added to a menu, they are going to have the form fully disabled. If they clicked on um, the other menu item that we created, it is gonna have the form uh, fully enabled and the buttons enabled as well. You could have taken whatever action you wanted to on the form. Uh, we just uh, disabled the form um, as an example in this scenario. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching. If you like the video, click the like button. I also invite you to push the subscribe button as well. If there's other topics you would like to see a video on, please post in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I hope you learned something new today. Thank you.